Kan man eh, spegelvända bilden man tror? <laughs> Annars blir det så. Ja, vi kan på plats. Johan, Niklas, Så pass. Han har inte dåligt. Han har Ja, jag är lite besviken. Jag är den enda här fina sättet. Ja, men in och kikar då. Jag har gjort precis samma sak. Jag tänkte, oh, skämt. Light mode. Det är snudd på. Jag, jag tänkte, alltså, och de redan, vi ser vart på förut har det varit typ tre personer utö- utöver de nödvändigaste. Ja. <laughs> det här är ganska fascinerande många. Ja, det är institutionen av högstadiekonsen. Ja, det är du på den? Ja, jag är med. Det är bra. Så jag, jag, jag är ett sånt random, så säger jag. Du är inte totalt random. Ja, inte riktigt. Jag gick samma utbildning fast ett par år till. Mm. Jag sitter och tänker kolla vilka jag känner. Ett år ringer brukar gå bra. De har fallit ett år. Men mer än två så börjar det bli svårt. Det är lugnt, det är helt okej. Det är inget som är helt sagt, men det är kompakt. Jag var på en flygrej. Jag hörde någonting om flygande kallingar. Jag kunde bara säga det. Jag kunde bara säga det. Jag kunde bara säga det. Så du är inte Absolut inte. Jag har tagit ett par år och gjort andra saker. Jag har resat mycket. Så jag har varit i ett par år nu. Men nu har jag sett att det här året har varit på Siemens i Finnsson. Jag har varit på Siemens i Ja, det är en stor grej faktiskt. Vi kan göra det. Jag har lagt det på din. Men det var säkert bra. Om det är en Det är det värsta som kan hända. Det är värsta saker på det. 
Nej, alla här är ju stöd för dig. Det är jag som är med. Precis, jag har moral stöd också. Det är det han som stöd. Det är han som stöd. Det är han som stöd. Det är inte så mycket. Det är han som stöd. Ska man kasta på dig också? Jajamän, det går inte. Det är kanske mycket. Ja, jag filmade där i saker som kastade på. Vi pratade om tälliga tidigare, det var inte lika resistent. Ost, ägg. Ja, bra. Vad har du med ost? Ja. Kan ni ge den? Var var vi det också? Ja, jag ska skicka. Nice, grattis. Det är nice. Så, vad gör du nu? Ingenting. Vi har samma låg fram till det borde. Jag ska åka ut och resa nu två månader från den 1 september. Ja, jag ska redan visa nu på flera. På med tunga fint i gasturbiner. På Siemens i Finnsborg. Med gasturbiner. Jag satt hela går och fördagen med att gå igenom rapporten med en handledare och se till att det inte fanns några information i det som jag gick och skrida vidare. Det var bra. Då ställde de det här. Då fick jag in den i dag. Jag fick igenom det ganska bra, tror jag. Ja, igår blev det tomt för. Det har varit långa veckor. Det är bra. Hur går det med spelningen? Jo, oh, men det går väl bra. Jag hade tänkt att det vore ju grymt om man kunde få så att säga, rätt vänd i spegelvänder. Så att det blir så svårt att läsa om det står där. Ja, det blir spegelvänd. Ja, det blir det. Nej, klart och klart. <laughs> ja, i och för sig, det är sant. Jag förstår väl att du skulle välja i och för sig. Ja. Ja. Så där vet Jag har inte sett frågor. Nej, alltså, så värst många. Jag kommer att fråga lite på folk har sett mig. Så det blir massa nu ganska. Det är lite mer frågor. Det är så här med att ha frågor som är lite andra synpunkter. Det är ingenting som man behöver direkt upp här. Det är bara lite formuleringar i folkhandsmässigt. Ja, som du också sa, när jag skrev det, jag skrev ut rapporten och hade, så jag har lämnat kommentarer på det. 
häftigt. Nej, jag har ju skrivit också att jag har förväntat mig, men jag tänkte inte att jag har det. Ja, det är nog jättebra. Har du eller vad Mm. Det här är ju samma som du var inne på, att vilken var det som jag planerade i behållfastigheten på. Mm. Ja, det är det. Det är ju det. Mycket bra, man tycker att kan driva inte på Oj, vad är det som? Ja, det är bra att du inte kom inte förberedd sig. Jag är inte riktigt beredd på det här. Det är nog bra. Har du redovisat eller ska du redovisa? Nej, jag kommer göra det senare. Jag kommer göra det i september. Jag vet inte om det. Mm. Nu är det så god tid att det här är en Nej. 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 Nej, det är spännande att åka ner för jag menar, han har ju ett stort skåpgäng som har skyttat sig till en sån. Då kommer det så att vi flyger inte. Ja, man kan ju fråga sig om kappet är då en påverkan av opponenterna. Mm. Är det flygande kakor? Jag inte skulle kappet vara efter då. Det är nästan, jag skulle inte ha burit vitt helt enkelt. Jag skulle inte ha burit vitt helt enkelt. Det är det. 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 Ja, det är det. Kan vi se till att vi är på väg? Absolut. Ja, men Uh, Kim, skulle mm. du vilja prova att gå in på Youtube? Jag har inte internet överhuvudtaget, jag försökte visa Youtube men använde wifi tidigare i går kväll och det lyckades inte, så du är inte. Just i sånt här, jag tänkte att det skulle börja snart igen. 
Kika. Kolla. Så vän. Man håller sig på plats. Så är det. Det är stream. Ja, det är det. Jag vet inte om det är någon som kollar det. Jag besvarade den frågan. Det får inte så långt vara. Jag vet inte, det har jag inte kollat på. Det. Nej. Nej. Jag svarade på frågan. Nu skulle hålla sig upp i alla fall. Vilket håll eller? Ja, oh, typ. Ja. Han har verkligen varit ska hoppa. Följ upp den här så faller det inte så långt. Ja, precis. Ja, just det. Det är en surfplatta igen. Ja, ja. I'm the examinator, Karin Larsson. I'm the second examinator for exam works at the K program, the chemistry engineering program. Uh, today, we will uh, Rogerman, Glass Rogerman and his work, characterization of those records, is comparing uh, coating and mechanically modified channels. He, he makes a presentation summary of his work. Then we have two opponents that will scrutinize his work. Perhaps you can stand up and present yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll stand up halfway. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Johan. I'm from the chemical engineering program. And uh, my name is Kim Benon, and I'm from the same program. And I also see some supervisor here. Lena, and Stefan. Yeah, okay. So, so, well, you were more or less the bosses for this. Uh, after that, after the opponents, you can, and anyone who wants can ask questions to, to Nicholas. Uh, so, let's, let's start. Okay, thank you. Welcome, and I'm very happy that so many here today. So nice to see so many friendly faces. Uh, once said, today I will talk about the characterization of lower beams in supercritical carbon dioxide and water in microfluidics, comparing code to the minimum mechanical of my channels, which is also the name of the time. So, over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to try to explain to you that's me, and why this is interesting. 
So the structure will be going. I will start about uh, uh, I'll start with a short introduction about my critics and supercritical fluids. Then I will present the uh, previous studies I've done in this subject, which will lead us to the aim of this study. And then I will present the, the manufacturing process and the experimental setup. I will, I will end with a result, discussion, and conclusion. So, microfluidics. It's basically the manipulation of small volumes of fluids, for example, in a shadow, where the ratio of uh, surface to bulk is very high. Uh, and small volumes makes it easy to control temperature and pressure in, in the shadow. And the small dimensions also make the flow laminar, which means uh, that it only blends by diffusion, so it doesn't mix very fast. And to give you what an idea of what I'm talking about, here you can see a typical uh, channel that is used in this product, um, like this. You have two capillaries attached to the, to the ship, so inlets. That, so here, for example, you flow water in this side, and here, supercritical carbon dioxide. They meet here, and this channel is of about 12.5 millimeters. And here, it's put up again into outlets. So, supercritical fluids. Above a certain temperature and pressure, uh, fluid comes to its uh, critical state. Uh, basically, it acts as a gas with liquid-like properties, or it has a uh, low viscosity, makes it uh, diffuse also, and still keeps a uh, high density, or dense like water, dense like water, dense like a fluid. It's liquid. Uh, and uh, supercritical fluids has been used in extraction processes as a substitute to more harmful organic solvents like Exxon or Toluene. In this study, supercritical carbon dioxide is used, and here you can see a phase diagram for uh, carbon dioxide, and here you have a critical point. So above 31.1 degree Celsius and 734, in this yellow area, carbon dioxide becomes supercritical. So, by combining supercritical fluids with uh, microfluidics, you get small volumes <laughs> from uh, microfluidics. You get environmental friendly chemistry by substituting harmful organic solvents. And you, get, you can get all the cost screening of parameters by changing the pressure and temperature. Okay. So, if you want to use uh, supercritical carbon dioxide uh, as a solvent in an extraction tool, for example, to extract uh, metal ions from uh, water, then you need to have a stable system where, in this, this example, uh, the, the flows of uh, water and supercritical carbon dioxide must flow in parallel. And then you need to characterize these flows in a microfluidic channel. And this characterization has already been done by Sam Hopkins here at Epsom University. I'll soon show you his uh, results. First, I will show you the typical flow reduce that he presents. Here you can see the same flow channel as I showed before, and water comes from the bottom as the dark part, so the critical carbon dioxide from the top as the light part. So you can see seg uh, segments. In the middle here is some sort of wave-like flow. 
and at the bottom, here you see a parallel plot. So these results were at a high flow rate. Oh, at the y-axis is the flow rate of carbon dioxide. At the x-axis is the flow rate of uh, water. At high flow rates of both fluids, up here you have a, a parallel flow with high flow rates of carbon dioxide and low of water. You have still a parallel, while high in water and low in carbon dioxide, you get this wave of light flow. And when both fluids have a low flow rate, you get segmented flow. So high flow, high flow rates, and you get parallel flow. Um, in another previous study, Akira Washi <laughs> and his group uh, showed that by building a small wall and walls of coat off the shallow with a hydrophobic coating, they could lower the flow rate while still keep a parallel flow. And by that way, they could extract the cobalt acetylacetal from the supercritical fluid to water. And they show that they could extract more with a little flow rate. So, taking this into account, this leads us to the aim of this study. <coughs> uh, first of all, we want to investigate the flow regimes of uh, supercritical carbon dioxide and water in uh, microfluidic channels uh, with uh, balls of different types in it. And also is coated and compare a combination and the separate ways of this. We also want to study the outlet, if you can control the outlet of the fluids, uh, if you can separate them or not. And so to be able to build these walls, we need to investigate uh, how to etch it. Isopropyl fluid in uh, glasses, the medium that is used. So we start with the third one how to build walls for control etching. Uh, so this, this is about channel manufacturing. Um, we have used poor blood glass in this study. That's because it has good physical properties and uh, it's transparent. So you can see what has happened in the flow. And to build channels in glass, you can uh, etch with hydrochloric acid uh, that etch in glass isochronic fluid, which means that it etch in the same rate in every direction. Let me show you where exactly what is done. We start with the wafer. This is a wafer shown as a cross section. You clean it. Then, when you don't want channels, you need to protect. You protect this with <coughs> chrome and gold. Chrome for adhesion and gold for protection. Now, you want to mark where you want to build your channels. Then you use spray to resist. And when you uh, expose spray to resist to ultraviolet light, it becomes soft and uh, goes away. So, if I want the channel here, then I expose it, expose it with my, so my mask here with my ultraviolet light. Then, you etch gold and chrome, so now the weight is exposed to the acid. Then you etch with hydrochloric acid, and once again, you etch in the same x-ray in all directions, so you get this Nice looking channel. And here I have created an inlet of the point inlet. Now I want to make my flow channels. So I remove the flow resist and I uh, spray new flow resist so I protect the over the build channel. I expose it to my mask and notice here that I have two openings with a certain distance between them. So when I etch here, you will 
they will grow together, and you will get the wall in the middle. So you X go from and go, go and go, and on your X, it lasts as you go And here you can see the wall. Then you remove the protective layer and move two, wa two wafers together. And why you do this in two steps is because the inverse and outlets are at least a bit bigger than the total in, in this space. But also, uh, the channels, when you etch, the adhesion of the protection layers is also impact, impact the channels. Because if you have good adhesion between the protective layer is more than red, then you get these nice isolated etch channels. You can see it by the look like a half circle here. When you have bad adhesion, okay, then the hydrochloric acid can come in under the protective layer and start to etch faster at the side than down. So you get this uh, lower slope here. So you want to at least know what, uh, what you get. So I have to test this. So I built a mask with 64 channels. Here you can see from the top. It had alternating distances between them. So when I etch, you get this corresponding small walls that get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This has uh, some point of why I do this. Mainly, it is because I want to know the, the slope of the, uh, of the, uh, of the channel. So I, I can calculate distance I need to use in the mosque. Also, I, need, I want to see how big are the ordinals so I can choose which I want to use. So for example, I choose these three. The, the and also, I tested uh, if uh, the thickness of the protection layer had an impact on the, the slope of the channels. And it had. But, uh, my main focus was to have a stable system, uh, not to have a good adhesion per se. <coughs> so, this is what the channel masks look like from above. Once again, you can see the distance I use in the channel. So, I use one channel without a wall, one channel with a small wall, one channel with a bigger wall, and one with a, with a big wall. And the purple stuff are the inlets and outlets for the channels. So now I have created ships for the channels. And now I want to code some of them. So how do I do it? Well, this is one way to do it. You I have this chip here with the inlets, outlets. You attach a uh, arm to one of the inlets here. The same side, you put one capillary to a coating agent. Then you pump it all the way here. And then at the other side, you have one of the capillary to a uh, trash speaker and one attached to the to a uh, syringe. So at the same time as I uh, pump my toilet, I create under pressure for the syringe. So I will suck up uh, my coating agent. And if I have the right flow rate in this pump, I will get a parallel flow here. So the colon flows in this part of the channel. A coating agent flows in this part of the channel and goes out to this outlet. So I have a free one coated channel part here and a coated channel here. In reality, it looks something like this. This is a test run with a coating, with a, with a, with a color agent instead of a coating agent. Uh, here, color is pumped, and you can't really see the channel with the following part here. But as you can see here, the outlet to the left is colored as. So you can assume that it is a part of the flow rate. And that only the coat agent goes to the right here. Then 
is not an experiment on the chip. We pump the carbon dioxide into a pump uh, and then uh, compress it to 100 bar. You do the same with the water for another pump. Then you let them flow through two inlets. And to remember, I want to put it to carbon dioxide. So I want it above certain one, certain three bar and certain one degree. And to be safe, I have a hot plate here that is, uh, has the 50 degree Celsius. And I have thermal grease here that uh, uh, makes the heat convection better so that I can know for sure that my that the fluid <coughs> in the panel here is uh, super critical uh, the core mass to become super critical. And I control the pressure in the pump here to be uh, 100 bar, and I use an outlet capillary to uh, control the space that is about, about 100 bar in the chip. So when it's always here, I have a microscope attached above the, the chip with a camera attached to the microscope so I can see what happens. And they flow through an outlet here and then also be tested to have a pressure sensor here. And we could see that above the speed or below the pressure you can see in the pump. It's showing a pressure sensor here. So if we have 100 bar here, we have 97. Then you have pressure drop, capillary, pressure height. And at the outlet, we have a heat refresh, refresh, because when carbon dioxide expands, uh, everything becomes cold around it. So it freezes the water. Otherwise, it gets a bit better. So, to the results. We we'll first, we'll first uh, discuss the result of the manufacturing, then the impact of walls, the impact of coating, and the impact of flow rates. Here, you can see the actual channels. It's a close um, I did align these manually under a microscope. It worked pretty well, but it's, it's still slight misalignment here. They uh, uh, sort the uh, bit more uncertain. Uh, so <coughs> what do we see now? It's quite hard to tell. I did want to show you, this is a little bit in slow motion actually. And why I want to show you this is because to make a point out that it's kind of hard to see what's happening. And to get all the details, you need to have a high speed camera. So you can see this stuff in slow motion, in really slow motion. This is about five times slow motion. And I'm not going to put it in the play rate. So, if you take these pictures, the impact of walls. Here we have a flow rate. Oh, oh I should also note, say that uh, in all these experiments, we have the same total flow rate of the combination of supercritical carbon dioxide and water of 150 microliters per minute. Uh, and these examples. Different heights in the wall. We use 75 micrometers per minute of those stones. So, with no wall, as you can see here, the flow becomes way, way more segmented. Uh, with a 0% wall, with a 26% wall, you can see that the super bit, oh, I should also say <laughs> the red part, I have colored the super critical part. Red. This I did by hand, so you can see it. So it's a complex easy. So the flow goes from the bottom up, 
and from the left comes superficial carbon dioxide, and from the right comes water. So now you can understand. Supercritical carbon dioxide with no wall becomes segmented in the cell and split at the top to both outlets. When you have 26% wall, it also becomes segmented, but as you can see here, it doesn't really want to move over to the, the water part of the cell. And if, uh, for the 7% wall, you actually get a parallel flow. At 65% wall, all the uh, supercritical carbon dioxide stays at the left part of the cell, but water being true to the left part of the cell also. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, in the previous image, uh, are the walls coated or not coated? Non coated. Non coated. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. These are all for non coated. This is just shallow walls. It's all different heights. So now I want to show this. Is this better? Yes. Okay, here is the no wall non cotation, the same as the last picture to the left. You can see how segments are created, and now this is much, much more slow motion. Uh, and that the uh, segments split at the top at outlets. So these parts are the supercritical carbon atom. For, us, for the smallest wall, for the 6% wall, again, as I said, the carbon dioxide won't really want to move over to the water part, but it does. Here, it's kind of hard to see, it's because it's parallel and it's actually loose, but you can see. All carbon dioxide, so the free carbon dioxide goes to the left, all the water to the right. And for the biggest wall, 65%, as you can see, water intrudes to the supercritical part here. So it's almost parallel, and the water part, all the water is in the white part. So, the result of the coating. Here's just a normal glass wafer uh, uh, that I have coated, and uh, the, the left part is non coated, and the right part is coated, and I have put uh, colored water droplets on the glass. So, what you can see is this is the working angle of uh, clean, wa clean uh, water to a clean uh, glass wafer, and this is sort of the, the contact angle after uh, a coating. But more interesting, how does this look like in a channel with a circular format? To the left, non coated channel, to the right, a coated channel. Here I've shown the contact angle for supercritical carbon dioxide, <coughs> and in a non coated channel, very big, and the angle of water is small. When you coat half the channel, I have only coated the left half of the channel here, you can see that the content angle is much lower. And what does this look like? The right looks really hard to see here, where the channel is coated. But once again, this is where you are over the seat, and the water split at the top, it becomes segmented. segmented. <coughs> in the coated shadow, uh, only a uh, supercritical carbon dioxide only takes love left up. However, water takes both up. Thus, you can 
what roles in the platform, so what effect of those others. Again, for, that was for 26% work. This is for now work. We have this segmented as well, where when it's not non coded, and when it's coded, only super critical common dioxide, uh, or super critical common dioxide, only takes the left out of it, uh, while water intrudes also to the left out of it. So you can at least control the supercritical carbon dioxide fluid with a coating, not the water. So the result of flow rates. This is for no wall non-coated. Uh, here you can see flow rates goes from 75 micrometers of both fluids to 45 micrometers of water and 105 of carbon dioxide. And as you can see, it feels to be more and more parallel the higher flow rate of, uh, of carbon dioxide compared to water. And an uh, example of the last feature to the right, you can see here that that should build some sort of process at the top. So those fluids take those outlets. But if you build a small wall and rise uh, the flow rate of carbon dioxide compared to water, it can make uh, the supercritical carbon dioxide only to take the left outlet and water on the right. This worked for the 26% work on COVID and works well, here's, here's an example of the of the removal before 26% work uh, of the when it didn't become segmented and then and the same So it's not the same Well this for the same percent work non coded it was always parallel. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we could only test one ship where this was ever other broke. And as a movie, it's kind of hard to see parallel flows in this because it stays safe. It's much easier to, to see changes. So the biggest work, uh, as I showed before, uh, water be true to the supercritical carbon channel, but when you raise the flow rate of carbon dioxide, uh, it become, becomes less and less. And here we did never manage to fix a total parallel flow where either water didn't include to the supercritical carbon dioxide part, or as here, Supercritical carbon dioxide get into the water part. Let me show you that example as a video where we can close the system. So here we can't really separate the flow because single water segments comes in here and goes out to the carbon dioxide exit. So, discussion. Changing the flow rates takes us from a segmented to a more parallel view. And this is what the Sun Open also said and showed before. So this is confirmation of uh, this study. By closing channels, we did um, control the exit of supercritical carbon dioxide, however, not the exit of water. And we can't really confirm anything that the Japanese studies are there, but we can indicate that they had to go And what's new for this study is that by building walls at different heights, that this can be sufficient for controlling uh, the flow of the two flows. But of course, you can combine 
all three of us. So, for example, uh, so the 26 percent wall, you combine the change of flow rates and the wall, then you have to take the uh, and what will we do better in the future? For example, we could build a uh, channel with three parallel flows and in an extraction, extraction, that is our goal, we would double the contact area in the middle channel. Uh, I should also say here, uh, remember, uh, Building walls, of course, uh, makes the contact area smaller. So that's a negative thing. Uh, so maybe it's better with the I don't know. But you could, you can, you could build a ship with a sweet dots. That could be better. That could be better. Also, as you see, so the alignment was good for the method used because doing it by hand is was like 50 to 70 micrometers long. That's good. But it can be much better if you use a machine like the non printer where you photo to take a photo of the wafer from the top and then you take a photo of the wafer at the bottom. Then you can like by a computer align it. But the machine I tested with this was uh, unfortunately not calibrated right, and we didn't have time to do it. We could also not only have channels in one of the wafers, so we have one flat wafer. Then we don't have to align anything. That's much easier. That's what we do now. Oh, to our conclusion, by building a wall that bottom separate the channel, we can control the flow of water in a supercritical carbon site. Depending on the height of the wall, and of course, if you change the flow to the right setting. And by coating half a shallow, you can control the exit of supercritical combat and power not exit of for work. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing your videos because following the report, it was uh, more difficult to get a sense of what happened. You, just, you had to describe it in text in the report, of course. Yeah. But here, the video along with your <laughs> words, you, you understood the problems that the different uh, um, samples had. Um, my first question would be... Oh, <laughs> All right. Everybody hears me. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, so my first question would be, you had some misalignments, um, right? So, which were the most severe alignments, and do you think it uh, affected the results? Uh, it might have affected the results, but uh, the biggest misalignment, which was the uh, circuit micrometers, something like that. Um, so, the top or the bottom of the object of the wall was not from each other. other. And, of course, that probably did affect uh, the flow. Mm. Do you know what? What kind of samples you got from that batch? Yeah, or no, everyone was in the same. Everyone was yeah. in the same. Okay, okay. But if well, we rather, it was two batches of alignment in the same batch of processing. So they have two different batches. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Um, now, let's see. You had some problems with the chips breaking under pressure. And I've been doing microfluidics projects, as you know, and myself as well. And what we took with us from that was that um, <clears throat> even though we did thorough testing before, simulating, uh, the chips bro broke. <laughs> and that seemed to be your 
case here as well. Uh, could you see, um, um, how do you say, a common factor for the chips breaking? Did they break at a certain point? No, not really. It's kind of random. Yeah. Some chips work for several several hours at high pressures, mm. then just broke. But some broke directly. Mm. But we have seen, uh, I talked about it earlier, about the radiation of the protective layer. Mm. And I didn't really care. I only had wanted to have a stable process that I could, uh, that I could uh, uh, predict the walls. But we have seen now that maybe if you have bad adhesion, you get a lower slope. Then on the bottom, you have this uh, sheet. <coughs> Stop this. Edge. Yeah. Uh, you have this edge. So it would make a better addition, get a smaller edge or a, 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 another angle there. Yeah. And that might improve uh, uh, the ship not breaking. Mm. So so the, the breaking, was it, uh, so to say, um, was it cracks? Or did the whole uh, plate? The whole plate. The whole plate. Okay. It's hard to tell. <coughs> yeah. You know, you know when when uh, uh, glass breaks. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Everything breaks up. Ah, the first point breaks. Okay. Okay. It's cracks. Yeah. And good. Mm. Uh, I think that's that's it for me. Uh, I would only ask you what was your favorite sample of the. Of the uh, uh, I kind of like small work. Mm. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I like 26% wall and uh, coping. It looked uh, really nice. Yes, congratulations from me. <laughs> well, first off, let me just say that I really enjoyed the presentation as well. I think it was a good compliment to your to the report as well, because I did have some trouble, some troubles just following parts of the report, but the presentation you just gave made it a lot clearer. Um, the first question I have is, as you mentioned uh, right at the end now, that if, um, if you have a wall, the contact surface between the two fluids will get lower. Yeah. And that would mean you would, uh, need longer channels, I guess. Yeah. If you have longer channels, would that affect how the flow behaves? Because they have to travel a longer distance. Because it seemed in some videos that it took a while for the, yeah. for the fluids to get segmented. Or Do you think the longer channels would would it affect the results, and how? Uh, I would say it's a hard question, <laughs> and a good question. As I say, yeah, a bit, but maybe not. Uh, it's hard to tell, it's hard to tell why it starts to, uh, is it because it's close to the end that it starts to uh, uh, segment, or is it because uh, it has flown too long in the, in the channel? You truly need to test that at least. Mm. Because you can't, you can't assume that's, that that's not. No. Did you ever try different channel lengths? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But they would behave quite different. Yeah, how so? Yeah. Well, mainly I didn't do a lot of tests with the, with the longer channels. Mainly due to it's harder to do photographing. Mm. So, um, and um, you could see the same trends at the same flow rates, but I, I don't have so much results there that I can say that it's the same or not. Okay. That's why I can't really answer your question and okay. say that, yeah, they, they do. Uh, that's dependent on, on the next. Yeah, okay. I don't think people agree. <laughs> Did you have a, was it harder to produce the long channels? Because you, you wrote in your report that you had a problem with the yield for some yeah, channels. Uh, was that I would depend? say that when you uh, when you bond the two wafers together, then you have a certain random factor <laughs> where you get uh, bad uh, bonding. 
So the bigger you have shells or the bigger you have structures in your wafers, the more percentile percentile chance or statistic chance is that, that they doesn't uh, work or doesn't have the volume. Mm -hmm. uh, but for my shells, I did do use uh, they wasn't so much bigger, it was much bigger, but I didn't get some. <laughs> mm, yeah. um, you work for some for some channels. You uh, said you got a good yield, and some you didn't, and that you had planned more samples than you could actually try. How many did you plan, and how many did you try? Uh, I planned. Uh, I had about uh, sixteen plan of each on my on my masking. Yeah. And then, for example, let's say that ten made this for the manufacturing. Point of one type, and then just two of another point. So then I go to plan to try both of them. At the, that's true. But for example, of the 47% work, we could only test one of the channels because uh, the next one that we tried to was the one I have two of, it broke directly. So we saw this uh, very good results with a 47% channel, and then we want to say, wow, we need to repeat this. We want to see. We that is really, really the worst. And then we couldn't. Mm -hmm. So that was important. Okay. Um, what uh, what combination of channel and coating um, did you get the, the best yield from? Like, which ones could you try more channels? And were there any difference between the results of that particular sample group? Like, if you had a 27% um, wall and and coated. And tried more than one channel. Did you have any um, difference in the results between uh, them? Not really. Maybe slightly. No. Okay. Well, not thank you. Piece. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see here. I. Oh yeah. Um, you said you got, well, you showed us that you got segmented um, fluids. Is it possible to lead the segmented fluids out um, in specific outlets? It is. Uh, or uh, uh, some of them, as I talked earlier, yeah. it, the, in this study, they also tested this. Yeah. And they showed that depending on, on the length of, of the segment and the flow, they said, uh, you could control. Uh, not control, but rather, if it took, then the segment would only take one of the outlets. But it was, I think it was random which outlet, and then the next one would follow the same outlet as the first one. So you could, it could kind of make the segment only take one outlet. Do you mean that each segment only took one outlet, or that every segment from that fluid uh, took one outlet? From Oh, okay. Cool. Um, oh, yeah. For the experiments, you said, or it says in your in your report that you used a uh, hundred bars pressure and three hundred and sixty Kelvin. So that was the goal. Uh, why did you choose these numbers? Okay. And then the, the outlet, uh, but, oh, okay. Uh, I use them because uh, uh, the pressure mainly because some have used the same pressure and mm -hmm. I didn't really think about it. It's good. And it was well above uh, the supercritical point. And then that, that was my focus pressure because uh, the viscosity over supercritical problem is much lower than water, so when you change the flow rates, the pressure mm -hmm. will, will change because uh, of the pressure drop channel. I didn't explain specifically in, in the report. Uh, so I had an aim, <coughs> and then so it was a K with aim to do. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. And I just wanted it to be super good. Okay, cool. Maybe that, uh, that this can, can can be very much more uh, uh, 
discuss the detail of Yeah, um, Did I understand it right that the before you let the uh, uh, carbon dioxide into the channels, when you had it in the pumps, the pumps did not, uh, it wasn't super critical at that point? No. Okay. Because in the pump, it was at uh, 9 degrees in system. Yeah. And we needed to heat it up to 12 degrees. So that's why we had the heat. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I was wondering about um, about um, potential sources of error, potential things that could have made the results maybe differ from what you would have otherwise. Um, I'm not sure if I... Do yeah, you uh, I think uh, the alignment is covered. Yeah. And then uh, I have an exact pressure. Yeah. Uh, what would you have liked to do differently? If you could do it all again, what would you have you know done differently? We are doing it now again. Oh cool. <laughs> what are you doing differently then? First, we are building that uh, have one of the weapons is, uh, is that, oh, yeah. and we have changed the the particular layer, bit. so we have much better adhesion. Uh, and I hope this should this is break as easy, but they are they are really tested one yeah. or two yeah. fairly well. Could go better, could go worse. I think I think they are they are a bit better. But I'm not sure. Do you know the reason behind why the, the things break? So is, is it just sort of a tension within the wafers, or is it the bonding stuff? I don't think it is the bonding stuff because when you when you look at the cracks, it isn't in the bond, so it doesn't it doesn't break the bond. Mm -hmm. As I said, it might be the edges that is the the crack can propagate. And then a certain crack level will break. No, uh, uh, just broke in uh, shit off. Ceramics? Oh, yeah, ceramics. You know, when you really have a, enough, a big enough crack that it's, it's yeah. boom. Well, thank you. I think that's yeah, all the you. questions I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else who has a Some weeks, 
was the same result after deploying for several hours. Because, well, if you use Tolkien when I make the chip, of course that's bad. It's not an environmental permit. But then you can, uh, you can uh, use the chip for much more longer time, and you, at least you use less Tolkien than you would if you use it in the flow chamber. And Thank you very much. Anyone else here? Please? Maybe just quick yep. uh, I think folks, uh, you can make an unmarked. No, it's a chat on point. Just some point in chat. It's hard to remember. <laughs> I may have missed this, Wind but what, what are the micro channels for? That's just like that. Uh, you can use them for, for example, to extract the left lines of water to put it to carbon dioxide. Why do you want to do that? For example, <laughs> if you, let's say you, you take a sample from the ground, and then you, you see how much uh, you have a stable system. You can see how much the lines have you on a certain zone, like cobalt. And then we can say, oh, okay, the ground water in this uh, place has this much net lines. <laughs> we can now do it as a name. I don't know if we do I didn't focus on that. It's for analyzing. Yeah, for right? analyzing stuff. Yeah, exactly. So it's part of a much bigger problem. Yeah, I this is the one. Yes. 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 Because you would like to have an exchange. Exactly. And, and to be able to do a very simple mobile system, so it's easy to uh, evaluate what actually happens. Then you have certain distances and it's fast because it's not very easy. Otherwise, if you do this with large PDT chasing, it's quite tedious. This kind of parameterization, five years or uh, more high cost by product. Another uh, question. This aim was to lower the flow rate compared to the other study. No, not really. That's what I understood. Okay. I also, the question was why is lower flow rate better than higher flow rate? Mm -hmm. So if you have a longer contact height with your best results, you can get more samples in a few zones. Um, you said you used borosilicate glass because you wanted to see in real time what happened with the fluids. If you were to make a lab on a chip, would you use borosilicate glass, or are there other things you would use instead? Maybe that wouldn't break as easily. You mean maybe you steel? No, well, not necessarily steel, but something. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe it's the cup. Maybe you can 
this is this way might be good. This is a good way to start. Yeah. No, I understand this is very good for seeing what actually happens to analyze the system as such, but my question is rather would this work in a large scale to use on a lab and a chip or would you use something else for that, do you think? As you said, they, they, they break. <laughs> they do. Yeah. So maybe you should look into something else also. Or maybe you just have like 100 chip. Yes. Okay, they break. Quack. You Wasn't the point of the lab on a chip though to make it take up less space? I feel like you could have have hundred of them. Yeah. Well, I can show you. <laughs> this is One hundred pieces is fit in this piece. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> so yeah, but you're right. Maybe that would be good. But it is rather common in uh, my. Microengineering to have a low yield, yeah, right? I think in science, because you try new, when you try new stuff, all the time, you get low yield because you have to test the parameters. If you uh, industrialize this stuff, I guess you just uh, use what it works and then try to make it uh, more optimized for your step processing. Definitely, but I think so the yield is slow as well. Yeah, but you can at least hire the yield. Mm. So Absolutely. Okay. Everyone is satisfied? Good. <laughs> Let's give me a Yes, I'm a... Yo, it's... It's a lemon and a roll.